Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, we've heard a lot of discussion about this issue, and it's a very emotional issue. I've had a number of conversations with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, and this is an issue I've considered since the time I ran for office in 2008. And I was faced with the reality of many parents who are forced to make a decision of where they're going to put their child in school. And we've heard a lot about the tears shed by many parents for various reasons, and there's also been a number of tears shed by legislators over this very serious issue that impacts all of Georgia. But the teardrops I remember most are the ones that come from a lady in my district, one of my constituents, who shared her story about her child, a gifted young man who had just completed elementary school, and she was looking for a middle school and realized that she didn't have very many choices. Representative Hurd shared some very detailed statistics and, and a, a very good analysis about the comparison of charter to public schools. And it's hard to make that argument when a lady is standing in front of you with tears in her eyes, when her perception, the taxpayer's perception and belief that the local school she's zoned for is inadequate and does not meet the needs of her child. She is a taxpayer is entitled and, and has a claim on some of that money we claim to be public money. Is she not a member of the public? Should we not consider her feelings and her views about the school she's been zoned for? Should we force her hand to accept the fate and the reality that's going to come from that school that she believes to be inadequate? Whether or not it made AYP or not, she and many others have tears running down their eyes when they're forced into a lottery process whereby they have one school that they focused on, and in this case it was Champion Middle School, a, a very well-known middle school, a school of choice, a public school of choice in DeKalb County, that this young lady wanted her son to attend. And, and she was told that there were several other parents, many hundreds of parents around DeKalb County realized that their options were somewhat limited, Although DeKalb, I will say, has gone a long way to accommodate charter schools, and we've been one of the counties that's been welcoming and supportive of charter school growth. However, I don't believe we've gone far enough. And with this young woman, I recall her sharing the story about the lottery and feeling hopeless. She wanted to believe in the public school system she went and got her education from, but with her child, it, it meant something. It was personal. It wasn't about the 1.6 million at that moment. It was about her child and right now. And I said to her what many of the school board members and politicians around this state have said to me, and that is, why don't you improve the quality of your neighborhood school? Do something about that. Let's improve the quality of the schools in our community so that we can attract our citizens back to those schools and stop leaving our community, going to the other side of town, or looking for an alternative. I would love for us to work on the quality of those schools that are failing and not meeting the needs in our communities. Failing for a variety of reasons. Many of them make AYP produce outstanding results and get the best out of our students, but many fail to do so. And with this young lady, she had the tears in her eyes and she said, I just wish, I wish I had another opportunity because I didn't make the lottery my gifted child is going to have to go to the neighborhood school. If I can't find some money, some resources, Ron, if there's not an alternative, another option, another tool in that toolbox to cure the need of her child who was hoping to advance in his gifted studies and receive a quality academic experience. That experience encompasses many things, the social aspects of a child's development, and I remember the tears of this lady vividly, like it was yesterday, and she asked me what could be done. And she doesn't want to know about the politics of the state having more authority or impacting local school boards. She wants to know what we can do for her child, because she doesn't have five years or ten years to wait while we get it right, and while the school boards in all of our communities get it right and correct the malfeasance and incompetency 
and all of the other ills that plague these local elected officials on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know they're faced with a lot of challenges, and I don't put the full responsibility on their hands because this is an issue that we faced 30 years ago. I recall 1980, as my parents had to make the choice about where young Ron was going to go to school, and they had recently moved to a neighborhood near South Central Los Angeles in a small city called Inglewood. And this was 30 years ago. 30 years ago. And it's ironic that we're discussing some of the same issues today when we look at our communities plagued by gang violence and an increase in fighting and bullying and all of these things that we witness on a day-to-day -day basis that many parents believe would not be the best environment for their child. Can you blame them? Can you really blame them for feeling that way? And can you blame anyone on this floor who wants to give them an opportunity? Those thousands of families who have an opportunity to attend a quality public charter school. I will say we worked in good faith with the leadership on the other side of the aisle, representatives Lindsay and Jones, as well as representatives Kaiser and Morgan. And we sat down in good faith, and I trust it was in good faith, to achieve a goal to enable our state to be a secondary authorizer, something that we made part of our race to the top application, which awarded us, the Obama administration, awarded us $400 million. There are 30 other states that have alternative authorizers. And I ask you, I please, I, I plead with you to support House Resolution 1162, thinking about the tears in the eyes of the mother who can't afford the private school tuition representative to go to charter school or a school out of her district she may have to pay for. As Representative Morgan referenced the ability of she and her husband to afford a choice school, much like the ability my parents, Gail and Whitman Mayo, may they rest in peace, had when it was time to decide where young Ron was going to attend. And because we lived in an attendance zone that they were not comfortable with, and because they were uncomfortable with the conditions of that school and the quality of that educational experience, they made a choice. And at that time, we didn't have charter schools. I wish there was a public charter school paid for with taxpayer money, that taxpayers, hardworking, poor and middle-class taxpayers, many of them resembling the people on my side of the aisle. When I looked out that window on charter school day, I didn't see a whole group of Republicans. I saw a lot of children who come from the community I represent and the communities represented by many of the Democrats in this House. And I would urge you to just think about that and think about those children and those parents who want an environment, a culture of high expectations. It's not always about ABCs. I understand calculus is calculus, algebra is algebra, language arts is the same in any school if the child is prepared and willing to listen and learn. The challenge in a day where we've got truancy bills that are going to put parents in jail for the lack of parental involvement, when we need to go to that extent, do we want to really want to force the hand of a parent to say, on one hand, we recognize that there's a number of parents who are not being responsible, allowing their children to miss schools, causing a distraction to the remainder of the building, and we're going to do something to put them in jail because we recognize there's a problem, and we recognize that these children are in your schools. Do we really want to force the hand of these individuals when we've recognized the sickness and the ills, the societal ills we have to deal with day in and day out? and force them to choose the school they're zoned for. And in the case of the young lady 
who had one other alternative. It was the middle school, the choice school. So everyone likes to encourage us to take advantage of the, the school choice that's already available, that already exists within the system. Those one or two or handful of schools that all of the parents, not all, but a good number of families flock towards because they have great reputations and they feel comfortable and secure about sending their children, their child. Think about yourself in this situation, making a decision for your child. And many of us have the opportunity to choose because we have the means to choose. But I ask you to think about the young lady with the tear in her eyes, limited means, who's waiting tables every day to provide a better life for her child who feels hopeless and helpless because there's no alternative when the choice theme school is full. She's left to fend for herself, to scrape up her resources and look for some alternative. I ask you to support House Resolution 1162 to offer all of those families, those parents, an alternative. And I understand it's, it's not a cure-all, but it's one alternative, it's one additional option that a family can choose from to educate their child. In conclusion, I just want to ask you for your favorable consideration of House Resolution 1162, a bipartisan resolution to enable this state to move forward to continue to serve Georgia children and Georgia families in education. Thank you, and I yield the will.